Welcome back, ladies, blokes, and non-binary folks to Brownlow Books. Uh, I have a review. It is a book that is on the Canada Reads shortlist for this year, 2024, which is the reason I'm reading it, but I am not going to talk about it in the context of Canada Reads. I am going to talk about it as if it is just a book that I have read. Admittedly, not a book I don't think I'd ever pick up for myself. I'm entirely honest. <laughs> Uh, it's The Future by Catherine Leroux, translated from the French by Susan, no idea how to say that last name, Uriu? Guessing. It's probably French, right? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> The Future uh, is a speculative, dystopian work of fiction um, in which Detroit was never surrendered by the French. So, Detroit is French, and I guess part of Canada. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, you know, everything is French. Uh, I will say, I can't remember if I read this in the book now or if I read this somewhere else, that um, when translating, there was an attempt made to keep what was considered the regional dialect or, yeah, I guess it would be a regional dialect of, of the area in the book after its translation. It's, it's interesting. It is, it is interesting. Okay. So the book centers around Gloria, who has come to Detroit looking for her two teenaged granddaughters who have disappeared after the murder of their mother, her daughter. So, <laughs> uh, she finds a city in ruin. Uh, part one is just following all of Gloria. Part two is following the children that live in Park Rouge in the city, um, their own little, like, kingdom. We'll talk about that. Uh, part three is kind of a mix of the two, and then there's a fourth part, which I'm not going to say goddamn shit about, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so, part one, following Gloria, finding this, this neighborhood that she's ingraining herself into that's just like willing to help her out like yeah we can't just pop down to the grocery store so like they're growing their own food they're trying to be really like sustainable and off-grid and like trying to just keep it together there's this great sense of community everyone is willing to help each other out even if like they maybe don't get along and they're kind of like mm. <laughs> you know and I really really enjoyed that part I really enjoyed following Gloria then we go to part two and part two is the kids in the park it is fine. That's not even fine. I didn't. I didn't like it. I did not like following the kids in the park. Um, there was just like so much going on, and kind of all over the place. And I just couldn't follow it. I didn't connect with it. I didn't enjoy it. I was like trying to like get through that part as fast as I could, and I was like, God damn! I hope we go back to Gloria because like I don't like this. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then, as I said, part three is kind of a communities intersecting kind of thing. And I really enjoyed that part, too, because it is a lot of Gloria and, like, the other adults. I just found, like, the children... <laughs> They're annoying. <laughs> They're annoying. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a speculative dystopian. There is a lot of, like, magical realism kind of stuff thrown in. I wouldn't quite say it's into, like, a full fantasy, though. I, had a, I saw a lot of people online calling it fantasy. I'm like, this isn't fantasy. Like, it's speculative. So it's, it's different. So you expect it to be different. And like, yes, okay. You know, there's kids in a park having their own little kingdom. But like, you know, um, you know the houses can like magically regrow themselves. Like, yes, that's, that's magical realism. That's not a full fucking fantasy. It's just... People, <laughs> discourse, <laughs> internet discourse. Okay. There was things I liked about it and there was things I didn't like about it. The pace is really slow. <laughs> it is a quite slow pace for most of it. It's not, it's not even through the entire book by any means, but like for the most part, it's, it's slow. It's rather slow. Um... I didn't like the kids part, as I said. Uh, it was... 
I think it, okay, <laughs> the reason I did not think this was going to be a book that I enjoyed is because people were comparing it to Lord of the Flies, and I fucking hate Lord of the Flies. <laughs> And guess what? I continue to hate the part that it was like Lord of the Flies. Uh, they're admittedly less murderous. But like, you know, it's still children without adults in their own little world that has its own rules. And I just didn't, I didn't connect with it. I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't enjoy the children. That, yeah, I didn't enjoy the parts of the children, like, at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that at that. Um, like, they have their own little, like, made-up languages and shit, and it's like, that's probably what they're talking about when they say, you know, original dialect they tried to keep intact when translating the book, but, meh. <laughs> Uh, it does have a lot of really, like, poetic imagery, similes, metaphors, you know, all of that. And, like, the one that I wrote down that I loved the most, the starlings take flight the way water erupts with a splash. But, um, that's also, it's also kind of a downfall of the book. Um, it is translated. So it's like, is this close to what? it was supposed to be or are you like flowering it up because like English is a weird fucking language okay <laughs> like in French this was probably some really beautiful shit and then in English you gotta pretty it up because it's fucking English <laughs> so like there was times where it was just kind of over the top just like too many layered on top of each other just like going for it where it's just kind of like you could just tell me the guy walked down the street. You know, that kind of thing where you're just like, too much, it's too much, pull it back. So I don't know if that's a problem of translation or not. Uh, the book does deal with a lot of themes of like, like the pollution brought on by over-industrialization and, you know, the poverty that would come from like an unchecked capitalism, uh, you know, racism out of fucking colonization, uh, which is talked about a little bit because, you know, obviously there was indigenous Americans in that area when the French were settling it. So that is brought up a little bit, but like, it presents itself in other ways. Uh, so like all of that, you know, goes to create this sort of like the way the community comes together and the way that they're creating a community out of, and, like, they're trying to make, like, something sustainable. I enjoyed that, but, like, the background of how Detroit got to this point is not there. I mean, Detroit has been in bad shape in the past, what, like... It's always been in bad shape. Who the fuck am I kidding? Um, <laughs> but, like, the things that we know, like, poisoned water and, like, the collapse of, like, the car and motor industry kind of thing like all of those kind of things you expect that to be like how this ended up like this but it's never actually said how Detroit ended up as what it is where everyone's just kind of like lawless on their own and have to create these kind of communities so like I was expected to connect with them I think on like oh look at this thing we're doing as a community together to make it better but like without the background of how it got to there you're like well why does this one particular thing you're talking about matter you know, it was kind of like that, where it's just like, I'm not sure why you want me to to look at this this way, but that's clearly what you want, but like, why? So like, it didn't, it just, all of those different things didn't come together to create something that I think that they were trying to create. Again, could be a problem of the translation. Who fucking knows, right? I don't read French. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, all of that together just didn't come, didn't come together for me. So, like, overall, I don't know, the whole the whole thing kind of fell flat for me altogether. Like, the way it wrapped up at the end, I was like, okay, there's some things I enjoy here, and there's some things where I'm like, I didn't, I didn't like that. And, like, some of the magical realism, like, the houses regrowing themselves, I'm like, that's really cool, I like that. But then there's, like, another, or, like, the black horse, like, that's, that's cool shit. But then, like, oh, such and such kid is a fairy, and you're like, what? <laughs> like... Just the way some of it came, well, it was like there. It's just like, no, that's not, that's not for me. Uh, 
So yeah, it's just, for me, it's just all together, all together, taking it as a whole that it is. The good parts weren't good enough to pull me out of the parts that I didn't like. It's just... I have this problem a lot, honestly, when I'm reading things that are translated. Um, I do often find that the language is either overly flowery or just too blunt. And things that might sound beautiful in another language don't sound beautiful in English because English is fucking English. Like... Well, ugh. but yeah, uh, together, meh, which brings me to online. <laughs> when I look at Goodreads, there is 487 ratings for this book. I am not missing any zeros. I'm not missing any numbers in there. 487 at the time of recording, which is just like fucking low. And I know this book was only published in French in 2020 and then the English version was only released in like 2023 late late 2023 which is a problem i have with a lot of things for canada reads this year the year that they came out yeah i'm i'll talk about that later uh <laughs> so it i can see how some people might connect with it i wanted to connect with it like this is my least enthused to be honest on the list of of canada reads this year and i don't hate it Admittedly, I do not hate it, but just all together is not for me. Um, so yeah, 487 comes out to 3.52 stars, which is like fucking smack there in the middle almost, right? <laughs> like that is, that is just slightly, slightly into more positive. <laughs> um, and I mean, for me, that's probably what I would do. I'd probably give this a three star. Like I was like, there is some really beautiful language in here. And some moments of, like, tenderness or just, like, connection that I'm like, yeah, I like that a lot. But just having so much of the children, a big block of it in the middle, I was just kind of like... I don't... I think maybe I just don't like the narrative of children in what is supposed to be an adult fiction. Like, I read a lot of middle grade, and I like middle grade. And usually it is from the perspective of the children, but like, that's what I'm signing up for when I read a middle grade. This is not middle grade. <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel a little bit of indifference towards it while still enjoying a few moments of beauty within. Yeah. So for me, it's just, do I recommend it? I honestly don't know who I would recommend this to. Like, I'm sure there's people out there that would connect with it and like it, but I'm just not sure what kind of people those people would be as as i keep saying gets referenced to lord of the flies a lot but like i fucking hate lord of the flies <laughs> and then i did see some people compare it to station 11 i'm not quite sure i i guess i understand the whole like taking care of oneself within a community taking care of that community protecting it from the larger outside world. I guess I could kind of see how it's got that in similarity with like Station Eleven and, you know, dystopian communities. But again, it comes back to, well, how did this happen to Detroit? What is everywhere else like? Because like, is it just Detroit that looks like this or does everywhere look like this? And that's kind of a problem with me of like, well, you're staying in Detroit, but... You could leave if Detroit's that bad. And, like, we don't really hear where Gloria comes from. What it's like where Gloria comes from. And so, yeah, just, like, I wanted I wanted background that I think would make me connect with it more. And, like, Station Eleven, you've got that fucking background, right? <laughs> you got that fucking background. So, yeah, not having any kind of background knowledge of this, I think, is maybe what kept me from liking it like this could have been five stars but i'd give it a three like that's that's how much of a disconnect it is for me it, all just all together and like the ending fell so flat for me i was like oh okay <laughs> so yeah 
it is on the Canada Reads shortlist for 2024 and you will see me discuss, sorry, <laughs> you will see me discuss it again uh, in conjunction with all the other books. I've got two more to go. I'll add this to the list. Okay. <laughs> so thanks for hanging out and I will see you around next time. <laughs>